Hello everybody, in this Rhino video demo, I would like to talk about a process of creating lips and roofs features for product design purposes. Before I begin, I would like to state that this video will be primarily about processes. As such, the dimensions and specifications used are only for illustration purposes. So you should not be basing your design on the dimensions and specification shown instead you should base your dimension and specification on your own design requirements okay let's start before uh, begin maybe i would like to uh, show you what are lips and grooves features okay Okay, as you can see over here, uh, these are lips and grooves features. Okay, they are primarily used uh, in product design for use as fasteners of uh, casings. Okay, so in this video, we will go through the process of uh, creating them. Okay, let's start. Okay, I've already created a casing based on a top and a bottom cover okay the top cover has already been uh, shelved producing an even more thickness okay so we're going to do the same for the bottom one okay so I'm going to use the shell command okay and set the thickness to 2 uh, this space for removal and then uh, wait for Rhino to do the shelling in order for the part to have an even wall thickness okay it's done now <coughs> okay let's uh, bring back the top part okay the next thing I want to do is to generate the cross-section profile for the middle section okay to do that um, I'm going to draw a line in the middle section okay and make sure the object snap is turned on the object snap end is turned on okay and then click on this draw the line okay and Going to the top view in our case, let's project this line onto the parts. Okay, so uh, click the project curves, select this, and project it onto the parts. Okay, and in the process we will get the cross sections. Okay, as shown here. Let's hide the other stuff for the time being. And what I'm going to do is to create the cross sections for the lip and groove features over here. Okay. To do that, I will explode this first and then extend this curve here. To extend, Use the extend curve command. Okay, so select the type to line or extension type, and then select the curve to extend. Okay, and specify the extension length. In our case here is our one point eight. Okay, enter, and we got this curve. Now I want to create a line over here with a length of uh, zero point eight. To do that, I can put a point and use it for extrusion into a line okay so I place the point using object snap end at this uh, end here and then with the gumball turn on click on the dot which is the extrude function and specify the extrusion length as it's moving in this direction I need to type at minus 0 0.8 the, okay yep so I got the line now I need to create this curve over here and as 
my design is meant to be injection molded i need to specify the draft angle okay so uh, the draft angle here is uh, going to be uh, five degrees so uh, let's uh, click the line and draw it here okay so click the first location okay for the second location you have to use the ang angle constraint so uh, type the angle sign and then type 5 because 5 is our draft angle so type enter and you'll notice that now the cursor is constrained to 5 degree increments so uh, you're going to draft it in this direction so click here to get it drafted to 5 degrees okay we can use the <coughs> angle dimension to, to check okay so let's select this two and you can see yep 95 that means there is a 5 degree draft over here okay and over here we also can check okay the the length use the align dimension yeah i can see it's 1.8 okay. so now i'm going to create like an l shape to close up this, this part here okay so i'm going to use the polyline again okay so uh, make sure object snap and is turned on press hold the shift key and then i want to bring the point here okay make sure object snap and is turned on okay so i want to uh, create like a closed curve object from this set of curves okay to do that I will um, trim out this okay so I can click the trim select cutting object is uh, this okay enter object to trim is this okay so now let's uh, join these curves together so click the join So, yep. So we have joined this, okay. And then um, let's uh, bring back the the parts, okay. So I need to uh, see this and this only, okay. So I will like hide the rest using the the inverse hide, okay. Okay, as you can see, we have created a cross section over here, and it must be, as mentioned, uh, a closed curve. Okay, because uh, when we do a sweep, we want to have the sweep becoming a solid. Okay, uh, the surface becoming a solid. Okay, so um, let's do the sweep one rail now. So I can come here and use the sweep one rail. So select rail. So the real uh, is this edge here. Okay, I think a better way to do it is to um, duplicate edge, okay, and create a curve instead. And we use the curve as a real, okay. So uh, let me execute the duplicate edge command. Okay, so we select this uh, edge and this edge, press enter for the curves to be created okay then we click the join command to join these two curves as a single curve okay okay now uh, let's uh, go back to the treatment rail again okay so click on this now uh, instead of using the edge let's uh, use the curve as our rail okay then for cross section this is the cross section okay press enter the one more time okay we have to set the frame style to root light okay instead of the free form because our free form we will not be able to know um, whether the surface is uh, created properly or not okay so uh, let's set to root light and by default okay um, if your rail is a non-planar curve, um, the axis will be set to the z-axis. So in fact, we don't really have to set our axis. But for demonstration purpose, I will show you how to set the axis. So click on the z-axis 
and then click two points to define your axis okay so yep and click okay okay now I have uh, created this uh, lead feature I have to merge it onto the main body okay to do that um, let's use the boolean union okay so uh, select poly surface to union is this and this press enter okay great we have uh, created our features over here okay so uh, let's uh, proceed to create the feature for the lower half of the casing okay so let's uh, show this lower casing cover and let's hide the top cover Let's show only what is required. Okay, so uh, let's uh, we need this and we need this. Okay, let's um, hide the rest. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, use this as a reference to create a new cross section, which will then be uh, swept to create a solid that we use to cut uh, this this main body here. Okay. So let's come over here. Okay. I'm going to create um, a copy of this. Okay. So go to copy. Okay. Then go to paste. Okay. And then I will make uh, changes to, to the copied one. Okay. I want to give a a gap over here so that when the other piece uh, comes in there is a bit of a tolerance for it to fit so uh, I'm going to give a gap of let's say uh, 0 0.1 okay so I'm going to click on this gumball to move it uh, 0 0.1 okay uh, so it should be minus 0 0.1 because it's going to be the other direction so minus 0 0.1 okay so I have uh, created like a gap over here okay these numbers are only for demonstration and illustration purpose so for your own design uh, kindly use your own specifications okay okay for this part I need it to be coming across over here so that when uh, we do the sweep one rail this region can be uh, removed using the, the boolean okay so <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I can turn the points on and drag this over here. Okay. okay, in your design, you might even have to you know uh, bring bring this down, but because uh, for the my design, um, I leave a gap over here as you can see. Okay, I leave a gap over here. Um, for tolerance purpose, I'm not going to create a gap over here, okay? So now, I don't need this anymore. I can hide this and I want to do the sweep one reel. And before that, I think let's uh, use the duplicate edge method to create a curve to be used for uh, railing purpose, okay? So... Let's uh, use a duplicate edge and join the two curve as one. Okay. Now let's do the sweep one rail again. So sweep one rail, select rail. Okay. That will be our curve and our cross section. That will be our cross section. And make sure it's our road light again. Okay, and set the axis to your requirement and click OK. 
okay this piece should be a solid so you can go to analyze mass property volume okay so you got the volume so it's a solid so now let's uh use this piece to cut this piece and the process will get the groove okay to do that we can use boolean difference just now we use a uh, boolean union but uh, in the case of groove making we need to use the difference boolean difference okay so uh select poly surface to subtract from this is it enter uh poly surface to subtract with is our sweep one real surface and press enter okay yep yeah, great okay now let's bring everything back and let's hide Curse. Okay. okay. Let me turn on the zebra. Sorry, the environmental map. Okay. Okay. As you can see, the Leap and the groove has been created. Okay, leap and groove has been created. Okay. Okay. With that, I come to the end of this video. Hope that's been useful for you. See you around. Bye.